Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is a very special video to me. Um, please like, subscribe, all that stuff. I hate saying that, but I want to make money. But anyway, um, this head's very special to me because it took a long time for this one to come to fruition. So let me explain what all has happened and how far it's come. This is a small block Chevy head, but this is pretty neat to me. You might get a kick out of it too. So this is actually an AFR casting. So, as you could tell, AFR is cast into it there, and this is actually how it comes when it starts. But this is an AFR casting, and I had them do some things to kind of help me out as far as porting work, and I finally got the finished product done. So I'm going to share it with you because it's pretty interesting as far as what it all what all has happened with this. So let me flip the head so I can show you a view so you can get a better idea. But this thing is pretty neat. This is the intake port view, and this may be like, who cares, I don't really care. This is actually pretty important. One of the major disadvantages for the AFR head has to do with the pushrod pinch, which is this distance where the pushrod is here, this area right here. Um, and the reason why it's kind of a disadvantage, and usually the reason why I use the Dragon Slayers for the bigger heads, has to do with this pushrod pinch area. On a Dragon Slayer, my most common one I sell is a 242. And with that one, with the way the push rod is and everything, I can make that cross-sectional area with a 1206 gasket about 2.7, or sorry, 2.63, sorry, 2.63. If I do a 1207 tall, but 1206 wide, that one gets to like 2.7. This with the AFR is a total different story. If you keep it with a 1206 gasket opening, which is what kind of common for most people, um, and the reason why I mention that, you don't really gasket matched for a head but I still, you need to think about it as far as widths wise because not a lot of manifolds will work with a taller intake port opening. So I use the 1206 and 1207 just to give you a reference about how tall it is because there's many manifolds that will not work with a 1207 tall. Anyway, back to it. Um, with the AFR, really the 1206 is about what height it is um, from the factory. That's great, um, but here's the problem. As you can tell, they've got a slot here for the push rods. Their push rod hole here, their slots are actually a little bit narrower than the Brodix, even though it's standard valve spacing. Um, because of that, this area here, so from here across, in other words, the width, is actually pretty narrow. Now I've thinned up this divider here to give it more room, which is great. And I know some people will make this super thin. I don't ever agree with that because that's one of those things you do that makes it look good on the flow bench. But once you put a manifold on, good luck getting that to seal. Um, so that's just a ego thing. But I keep it kind of thick like this so it seals. But because of that, still move it over. You just don't have a lot of room. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, if you ever try to grind your AFR heads because you think you can get more room here, you don't. There's only 30 thousandths of material between this from the factory. So I don't even touch this wall at all because you're very likely to blister. In order to fix that properly, it will not be epoxy, you have to mill this out so you can get your welder in there to weld it up properly, pain in the rear. So since you can't go wide, the only thing you can do is go tall. So one of the things is it's got a ski slope on the short side, which means the short sides literally face like this. The Brodix will make like a lump, it'll go straight then come up and over. So I dug down down here to gain some area, but the biggest thing is I raised it. This is a 1207 tall. So that's how much, so it is taller. So 1207 tall and it's 1206 wide, a little bit actually narrower than 1206 wide. So 1207 tall, 1206 wide. His manifold will work with it because I'm porting it so that I can work with this, not a big deal. But even doing all that, digging out the floor and raising the roof, this cross-sectional area is 2.5. So in my, I just talked about the Dragon Slayers. The Dragon Slayers will get a 2.63 with a 1206 opening. It will get a 2.7 with a 1207 opening. So you can see how much less area you have available because you can't move this over. But that's the reason why I use it for smaller cubic inch engines. So if you're, even on a 400, if you're not turning a whole lot of RPM, say 7,000 RPM, this thing's a bad boy. Um, if you're going above that, I'm going to probably switch in my Dragon Slayers. But that's the only disadvantage. Now, of course, before you get too worked up, I have an option to get it where they don't do the holes at all, and then I can grind the push rods that I want. The disadvantage of that is you're required then to run a shaft rocker. 
These do not require a shaft rocker. So 1205 or 2.5 square inches is what you got for the pinch. So as you can tell, it's kind of a moderate port. Great for what this guy is going to do. It's going to have a lot of velocity. It's going to be great. But there's that. Let me flip around and show you the exhaust port because of this is that will probably be the biggest difference um, between um, the stock AFRs and what I've done here. Oh, one more note. If you raise it up, this port, in case you're wondering, I could port this on my own. They, I think they've machined, this is a valve cover or stud hole. They've machined it too deep, the hole. So you will break through in the corner right there. It's not a big deal. Just make sure you put silicone in whenever you put a stud in. That silicone will kind of block off that hole. It's not a big deal. Um, just something to keep aware of. Anyway, let me show you the exhaust ports. Okay, this is the chamber view. Let me tell you the purpose for this head. If you know, I carry, I'm a dealer for AFR, I'm a dealer for Brodux, I'm a dealer for just about every head, but each head manufacturer fits really a different part of the market from where I want it to be. So for instance, I usually use Brodux cylinder heads on bigger cubic inch engines or ones that spend more RPM um, because I can do different things with them. The AFR casting I like to use on stuff that's like in between. So um, in other words, it's more of a smaller stuff. So in this case, this is actually going on a 383 that's going to turn about 7,500 RPM. My Dragon Slayer head that I port would be pretty good for this, but um, I think this is the better option at this point. So I'll tell you some of the stuff that's been done and why I really kind of like what's been what's happened. First off, this has, I'm going to tell you the valve sizes. This is a 210 intake valve and a 1600 exhaust valve. It's standard valve location, so nothing's moved. So if you ordered an AFR 210 or 220, the valves are in the same spot. It also still has 8 millimeter stems, and it has a, and I'm actually using AFR valves with this. I do have a 50 degree intake seat and a 45 on the exhaust. Um, really nice. I know you're thinking, well, doesn't 50 degree valve seats actually hurt um, low lift flow? I'll show you the flow numbers, but you'd be a little, little surprised. The thing that made this head different from me just ordering a regular AFR 210 and porting it is this. I had them not do the CNC porting on the exhaust port. This is how the exhaust port actually comes. And you might say, well, why did you do that? Well, the biggest reason why is because on AFR's heads that they have, they typically make the exhaust bowls really big. And what that means is there's only so much distance here and here. So when they make the exhaust bowl so big that it makes the distance in between here much thinner. So in my case, I couldn't make the intake bowl bigger because it would be too thin for what I think should be safe for in between the intake and exhaust port. So typically I'd make the bowl smaller than what I usually do just because I'm afraid of that. So by having them not cut the exhaust port, I can now move the intake port over more and get more um, area where I want it to be. So I did that. Now I did leave the AFR vein that faces this way. Um, most common of us, we usually have it facing this way or a little bit like this, maybe not this far exaggerated. I do plan at some point to test, hopefully on the mule engine, about having the vein in different spots and what it actually does as far as horsepower and torque. Um, and I'll get to more of that later on in this video. But it does have this vein that faces this way. And I think on a smaller cubic inch engine like this is going on a 3.3, it's probably going to be fine. Um, I will say... This vein changes a whole lot to do with flow, especially having it face this way. What it typically does is, from what I've seen, it really helps out the lower lift flow numbers. And I shouldn't say lower lift. One, two, three, four, I don't think it makes any difference at all. The thing that's really shocking is it'll make the six and 700 numbers really high, but it's a trade-off. Usually above that, because you're taking up all this area with having it this way, and because it's blocking flow in a certain direction, it actually makes it flow worse and starts backing up flow above those points. Now, there's some things as a porter we can do to um, band-aid this. And I'm saying this, I know some of this will go right over some of your heads. It all has to do with velocity to make that turn over the short side, which is this part right here. So we can band-aid it by, of course, making the bowl bigger or laying the short side back and changing some of the shapes with it. Because this is taking up area, clearly. We just have it here. It's not going to take all this area up. So there's things we can do to band-aid it um, to kind of help with that. That's the reason why I want to get on the dyno to see what this vein actually does as far as horsepower and torque because it will back up and flow above, eight, uh, really above, yeah, 800 valve lift, I think it backs up. And I'll show you the flow sheet. Like, I know when I say that, we're going to have several people saying, why do you care? Most people don't have a can lift, 800 lift, because it's how the engine will react um, 
is indicated by how it flows on the flow bench in a way. It's not always guaranteed, but usually if a head's backing up on a flow bench, chances are it's going to go into choke on a live engine. And in other words, it will still make power, but it will not carry the power. So there are some things that are correlational with the flow bench and the dyno. It's not absolutes, of course. But anyway, the head itself, this is going to come in about, it's right now I think it's 240 cc's, which sounds really, really large. Um, and, and it is because this one's a little bit bigger than what I normally do, but because this guy's turning a bit more RPM. But as far as sizing wise, it's it seems actually kind of small. For instance, the throat's 91% and the bowl is, I won't tell you that one, but the bowl is a little bit smaller than what I would use, say, on a Dragon's Lair. These do have 65 cc chambers, which I like. The exhaust port's way different from Brodick, or sorry, from AFR, which I'll show you in a minute. Let me change view so I can show you some of the other stuff that's been done so it'll make more sense. This is the exhaust ports that I've finished with them. If you'll notice, you're like, those are D ports, correct. I'm gonna show you, this is how it starts. So this is a very small rectangle. Whenever AFR, before they start doing any of their porting, this is how their ports looked. This is what they look like when they finish them. This is what I did. I prefer the D ports myself. However, this is, there's, I'm doing a, two sets of these are getting done. This is the first set to be done. And I wanted to try the D port. Now I will say these exhaust ports are raised up. So they are taller than say your AFR 195s. They're just like the 210, they're raised up more. I did a D port because I'm really a big fan of them. I do think they work well. However, this exhaust port, it's not small, but definitely not as big as what I do on the Dragon Slayers. The Dragon Slayers exhaust ports, they're deep port too, but they are raised up more. And I actually left their opening bigger than this. This customer, I'm gonna let him try them out. And I said, if it doesn't work, the one thing I wanna change, um, which I think it's gonna work, but if there's something he wants to see if it will improve or if he's happy with it, we'll just keep doing it. But the one thing I would be interested in is if I squared these off and made a big old rectangle like this, how much is it going to change or add? I plan on whenever the dyno mule goes together, be testing that one theory alone. However, truth be known, I really think this is gonna be the ticket. Um, these only flow 230 CFM um, peak without an exhaust pipe, which is pretty good. But in all fairness, the Dragon Slayer is gonna go about 245 on the exhaust port, but their exits are bigger and the port itself is bigger. I think for what he's doing, this really will be great. I, I, everything I think, besides just going after Ego for a flow bench number, tells me these are better. So the area is there, it should be fine, but it's vastly different from what AFRs is. And AFRs are bigger too, because remember, this is this is the side where they are close to the intake port and they made it so much bigger here. And I, you can't work with what I wanna do on the exhaust intake port, having the exhaust bigger over here. So, and plus I think their exits are bigger. I actually think this is also gonna, truth be known, when a header is actually attached, it's probably gonna work even better. Do I flow it that way? No, but a really good head. And just to give you an idea, the flow numbers, at, really, it's outstanding, even the low lift numbers, one, two, three, four, five. It's really from five on that it's not as good as some of the Dragon Slayers. But we'll show the flow numbers in just a second, but I wanted to just show it to you that because I kind of explain how this is. Um, but let me get the flow numbers and I'll share those with you. And I float them on a couple different bores as well, just to see what it would do. Here are the flow numbers. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you this. This is for a customer. So this is actually what, when you see the cylinder one, this is what his head was before. He had an AFR 210 that had been ported. This was his before flow numbers. This is after. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you this too. This is on a 4030 bore. So really, if you're, the reason why I put it on that is he's doing a 3D3, which is a 4030 bore. So this is the flow numbers from that. So if we look, the ones I like the most, the numbers I care about the most are four, six, and then peak. So we look at four, it's 247. That's actually a really good number, especially from a 430 bore. If we look at six on a 430 bore, it's 310. That's pretty good. But here's what's shocking. I let it go to 650 because I remember I told you about that vein. That vein does very weird things in the port and that makes it really stellar in the six to 700 range. This is what I mean. At 650 lift, it went 330 and then it backs up and it just kind of drops and starts gaining again. Um, it's one of those weird things about the vein. If the vein was straight, what would happen is this number here for sure probably wouldn't have been this great. That actually probably would have been better. This probably would have been a 314. It'd probably been like a 318 here. And then would have kept climbing all the way up to about 325 here. 
Um, so that vein kind of does weird things where it pumps it up here. That's why I'm really curious on the dyno what this is going to do. And I will get back to that in a minute, so please pay attention to the end. Uh, this is 430 bore. Now, this is on the Sanyas bench too. For those that don't watch my channel enough, I have two flow benches, the Sanyas Digital 680, then I've got the industry standard, which is the Superflow 750. Both were brought brand new. Um, use them both quite a bit. This is the exhaust flow. Um, the exhaust flow at four is 197. See what I mean? That's really, really good. But it only did 222 on the um, exhaust port there, which is kind of a, that's what I mean. It's, it's really close, but on a 430 bore, and I said 230 CFM before, and you'll see why I'm say that in just a minute. But um, yeah, so it's it's not bad at all. Clearly, it's up from what he had, and you got really strong low lift lumbers. I want him to see try this first because I you really really cannot um, do do your engine exhaust ports based on what the flow numbers flow bench tells you because it's such a different scenario in a live engine. I really think this is going to be perfectly fine uh, for. Just for giggles, like attached a one and seven H pipe, and it went like two forty three. So I'm not really worried, to be honest with you. But it is. It's not the only thing I use the exhaust flow numbers for is to see if it's horrible. It is not clearly, and it's kind of doing what it what it's supposed to. Um, but anyway, this is four hundred thirty bore. The next thing I did is I put the head on the super flow bench, and I floated on a four hundred thirty bore and a four one fifty five bore. So here we go. This is right here is from a 4155 bore. So this is the 406 type bore. And if you look at it on the float on the superflow, 400 is 257. It's pretty stout. But here, look at this. At 600, it's 320. See how good that is? And then at 650, it's 334. Really stout. And then at 7, 343. And then it kind of backs up again, 331, 330, 331. So Really, really good. It's much better on a 400 bore, uh, 406. Um, very good there. And then if you could tell what it did to the exhaust, it, it's 229. Uh, so like I said, pretty close to 230 CFM. But then because each bench reads differently, I also float it on with a 430 bore. And here we go. So 250 now on the 430 bore. And then at 6, it's 313. Uh, and then at 615, it's only 325. But this one goes 329 at seven. See how the bit just kind of read different. So there you go there. And then 325 where it ends at one inch. Exhaust flow, um, 225. It's weird that it's lower here, but higher here from different benches. All this without an exhaust pipe. Really, really great exhaust. Really good numbers, period. I'm curious to see how this performs. He's gonna have track times to back it up. So um, if it doesn't do well, I'd be shocked, but that just gives me something else to look at. Since I talked about the dyno stuff, I told you I'm doing two pairs. The second customer's one is for a guy in Australia. Now, he'd actually emailed me whenever I brought out the whole dyno mule thing. And he said, why don't you just go ahead and throw my heads on that dyno mule? And I'm curious to see what it does compared to that, which I may do. Which means his heads will be slightly different. I'm not going to do a 1207 tall on his. I'm going to do a 1206. So the cross-sectional area will be probably 2.4. A much smaller cross-section than this 2.5. But I may throw it on the Dino Mule, which is 406, and we'll see what it does. I'm going to probably do the exhaust ports the exact same way, and we'll see what happens. Then you should have some information as far as what it actually does. It'll be very interesting. Because if we compare that to this enforcer head that I'll be running, once it's ported, it's full of numbers, like I can already tell you, are just going to keep climbing. It's not going to have a really a problem with that. It's going to keep climbing all the way compared to this one peaking then dropping. So that will be very interesting to see what happens on the dyno. Because I'm sure when I finish fully porting the enforcer heads, it may come close to matching these numbers, but not the same way. So the curve's gonna be different. I may take him up on that offer. I kind of hate to do that because his heads will be brand new. So, but he did volunteer and it'd be a very interesting test to see. So, and I appreciate him making that offer. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Guys, remember, I'm Ross Superman. You guys take care.